Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to do my 2020 reading survey, let you know all of the stats about how my reading went in 2020, and this video is the precursor to my best of list. For now, let's answer some questions about my reading in general that may not pop up in my best of list. The first question in the reading survey is how many books did I read? And looking at Goodreads, I feel like Goodreads and my Excel spreadsheet are always off. Goodreads said that I read 185 books this year. And also, how many pages did I read? I read 53,000 pages. My average page count is 288, so it's obvious that I like shorter books. Um, and this is also true because I read a lot of middle grade and I also read a lot of graphic novels that are on the shorter side. As for my split between fiction and nonfiction, this year I read 60% fiction and 40% nonfiction. It ended up being 109 fiction books and 70 nonfiction books. And I quite like how that ended up. As for the audience breakdown of the books that I read, I read 20% young adult and that ended up being about 37 books. I read 35% juvenile and that ended up being 63 books. And I read about 45% adult books and that ended up being 80 books. So this year my reading flipped again and I read a lot more adult books than I did last year when I read quite a lot more juvenile books and I hope to continue in that direction in the new year. As for the format of the books, this year I did something new. Last year I only had the categories of audiobook, print, ebook and print graphic novels because that's the only way that I usually read graphic novels. This year I added combo because I've been reading a lot of books while listening to the audiobook so I'll have the audiobook on as I'm turning the pages and reading and it helps with my comprehension especially during this year. So this year I added combo as another option in the format. So for audiobook almost 100 audiobooks at 55%. So again like it's been the case for the past few years, audiobooks are really the thing that get me to read and get me to finish books. And I am so thankful for that because it's all I do when I'm doing chores or when I'm out walking my dog and things like that. So audiobooks are a lifesaver. Then the second highest is print graphic novels and that's at 27% with about 48-ish graphic novels. Like I said, I don't really read graphic novels ever on ebook and so I always like to differentiate print and print graphic novels. For print it ended up being 12 books at about 7% which is actually quite high and that's because some of the books that I wanted to read this year were not available as audiobooks. Then combo is 10% or 17 books and then finally ebook only 2% so 4 books I read on ebook this year. Not a lot. I am not an ebook reader. As for how my ratings broke down, I gave a lot more 5 stars this year than last year which made me happy. Same with 4.5 stars. I gave out quite a few. So I had 9 5 stars, 12 4.5 stars, 67 4 stars, 26 3.5 stars, 50 3 stars. 2.5 stars I have 4, Two stars, I have 11. One and a half stars, I have one. And one star, I have zero. This is something that I kind of want to work on myself. In the new year, I'm really bad at rating books one star. And it might be because if they're that bad, I usually DNF them. But also, I feel like usually if... I make it through then there is some redeeming quality that makes me feel bad to rate it one star flat. Um, my average rating for the year is 3.6. As for the questions in the rest of the survey, here are some of them. What is your most read genre? My most read genre is always realistic fiction and that is the same for this year. I read about 61 books that I qualified as realistic fiction. These are usually contemporaries and things like that. Then memoir is the second most read and this is also something that is very true to me and something that I've seen in the past few years. I read 16% books that were memoir, ended up being about 28 books. One thing that I noticed in my genre breakdown is that I definitely read more mystery than usual and that's something that I want to work on to figure out more about what it is that I'm looking for in mysteries and you saw that in my first quarter goal. And I also noticed that I read more essay collections than usual and that's also something that I really enjoyed this year. Every essay collection that I picked up I really enjoyed. So it's something that I hope to read more in 2021 as well. The next question is, what is my favorite book of the year? This might be a little bit of a spoiler, but this includes everything. So my favorite book of the year, fiction, nonfiction, young adult, kids books, adult books, graphic novels, everything all together. My favorite book of the year is Saigon by Phuc Tran. This is a book that I read over the summertime that really felt like such a true experience to what it's been like as a first generation immigrant kid here who was born elsewhere, but ended up here so young that basically you have 
become Americanized so quickly. It's also an interesting depiction of how Tran's family sees the American dream and how the older people in his family versus him see that experience. And I also saw a lot of my family, my older relatives views of the American experience in that, especially my dad. But I also just loved his writing style. It was very self-deprecating and humorous and it felt really honest and raw and vulnerable. It was just a memoir that really overtook my life and I finished so quickly and I love the audiobook narrated by the author. If you're a fan of memoirs, this has my seal of approval and I hope that you enjoy it if you read it. The next question is, what is my least favorite book of the year? I decided to include one for kind of each type of book that I read because there were quite some duds this year, I'm not gonna lie. My least favorite middle grade book that I read this year was The Blackbird Girls. And this is a book that felt so uh, confused with what it wanted to be. It had messages that it wanted to ascribed to the reader and I just felt hit over the head by them. I also felt like going into it, it was going to be a book about the Chernobyl disaster, but it's actually not about that at all. It's barely about that. And then the rest of the book is something completely different, including a whole side plot about World War II. I don't know. My least favorite nonfiction book that I read this year is I Miss You When I Blink by Mary Laura Philpott. This is a book that I have always seen described as like really relatable, really down to earth, and really honest and raw. And what I found is that I did not relate to the narrator at all. It came from a very privileged perspective and I understand that everybody can hurt. It's just something that for me personally did not resonate. My least favorite fiction book that I read was a mystery book and this was The Holdout by Graham Moore. This book was ridiculous. It was entertaining enough that I wanted to finish it, but I came to this book because it was going to look at a trial and also look at a true crime documentary of something that happened. Instead, it just went completely off the rails. It wanted to talk about race and it did not do so well in my opinion and a lot of the things that happened in this book just had me rolling my eyes honestly. My least favorite graphic novel that I read this year was Nate Powell's Come Again. This was a really confusing, muddled, and unrecognizable graphic novel book by one of my favorite graphic novelists. I just did not understand what the point of the story was. It was really dissatisfying. The next question is, um, most disappointing book of the year? For adult fiction, my most disappointing book of the year is Saint X by Alexis Shaken. This is a book that was touted to be similar to The Girls by Emma Klein, and I did not think that it was. My most disappointing middle grade book of the year was The Thing About Jellyfish, a book that has been for as long as I have known anything about middle grade. One of the most talked about and hyped books for middle graders and one that completely disappointed me. I did not like how mental health was handled in this book. A book that handled mental health much better this year, in my opinion, for middle graders is The List of Things That Will Not Change by Rebecca Stead. The way that it described going to therapy compared to the thing about jellyfish, I think was much more positive and healthy and one that I liked more. And the most disappointing graphic novel that I read this year is A Bind Up of the Plain Janes, which is a very well-known and renowned uh, graphic novel series. It was one that I was like, oh, I'm going to read a classic in the graphic novel format. And I just was really confused about why I should care about the characters in the story. It felt like the same message was happening on every single page without developing the characters in a way that I cared about what happened to them. The next question is what is the most overhyped book of the year? Unpopular opinion but I did not really care that much about hood feminism considering how much hype it was surrounding it and I definitely did not like the audiobook experience. It was one of the choppiest experiences um, of any listening experience that I've ever had. Another book that I think is overhyped this year is Mexican Gothic which is a book that lacked character work and also had a really weird romance plot that I did not care or you know find any chemistry in those two characters being together. The next question is what is the most underhyped book of the year? One of the most underhyped books of the year that came out recently that I've heard basically no one talk about is A Knock at Midnight by Brittany K. Barnett. This is a book that really surprised me during nonfiction November and it's one that I would recommend if you like stories like Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy, The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. If you like to read about how the law and race merge together and um, to also read about many people who have been forgotten 
by the drug war. I love the author who narrates the book herself and just her quest to continue doing this in her downtime. You know, after she goes home from work, she goes to work again so that she can get more people out of prison who have been put away for such a long time considering their offense. The next question is most unexpected book that you loved? And I have a few for this question just because I couldn't pare them down. So some books that really surprised me were Writers and Lovers. It was just such a good character study. I also love Sabrina and Karina, which made me start this idea of I want to try more short stories, but more short stories that are more tailored to my type of reading. I also loved Open Book by Jessica Simpson, and that one really surprised me. It definitely was a lot more vulnerable and genuine than I thought that it was going to be. I also really loved Why Fish Don't Exist. This is a book that I didn't know anything about until I got into it, thanks to Libra FM having an ALC of it, and I devoured this book, and it's been a book that has continued to come up when I think about books that have really impressed me this year. The next question is longest and shortest read books. My shortest book is On the Horizon by Lois Lowry and my longest is Little Women which at 777 pages is the longest book that I read in 2020. I thought that maybe Barack Obama's book was going to be the longest but no. Little Women was. The next question is biggest reading accomplishment you felt? I probably would say Little Women because I did go back and forth between a few audio versions trying to find one that worked for me. I got the really big annotated version from the library and so I would pause parts to then read the footnotes and side notes about what is going on in the story to kind of give it a little bit more context so I would understand just like the time pieces that it was talking about so it definitely took me a long time never mind that the book is actually really long Maybe next year I can read another classic, right? Maybe I'll just read one classic a year. The next question is favorite character. I have two favorite characters and just like last year, they're from middle grade books. My first favorite character this year was Beezus from Beezus and Ramona. This is the first time that I've actually ever read Beezus and Ramona and I connected so much with Beezus. Just her general anxiety and like her general rule following. She's not impressed by Ramona's hijinks. I also really loved Scoob in Clean Getaway. He was just such a complete and whole character. The next question is a book that made you cry. The only book that made me cry this year was how We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. This was a book that I read in like February and I just cried single tears with my comforter over my body. It just was so emotional, heart-wrenching, cathartic, and I felt so impacted by his words. The next question is a book that made you laugh. I actually couldn't find a book that made me laugh, so I changed this to a book that made me smile. Two books that made me smile this year are Dear Sweet Pea by Julie Murphy, which just had this warmth and heart to it that made me smile reading it, and also You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. This is a very uplifting young adult book. It was a book that focused so much on the happy moments of the main character's life that it made me happy just watching her flourish. And then the last question is a new favorite author. I would definitely say C.S. Pacat is one of my new favorite authors. I've read four graphic novels, the Fence graphic novel series by her this year, and I am so excited about anything Fence, and I think it's because of how C.S. Pacat writes characters and friendships that I love so much. And that is it for my reading survey. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and finding out how my reading went this year. If you have any comments on anything that I said, leave them down below. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.